Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chapter 2.4. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're going to be talking about complex numbers today. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about how to perform operations with complex numbers, how to add, subtract, multiply, divide. And we're also going to write out imaginary numbers uh, given negative radicals. And we're also going to solve quadratics using complex numbers and imaginary numbers. So let's get started. Uh, first, let's recap what an imaginary number is referring to. Oh, there we go. This is what we mean when we talk about imaginary numbers. We mean the letter i. And that comes from the square root of negative 1. We know we can't have this. and this doesn't become a real solution. So instead, we substitute it with the letter i. And remember, if we square this, if we square, that's the same as saying i squared, which is the same as saying just negative 1. All right. Uh, now let's talk about complex numbers and their standard form of complex numbers. And complex numbers are imaginary numbers with a real number. Complex numbers are some number a plus bi, where a is the real part and bi is the imaginary part. Now, let's talk about some operations using these uh, standard form complex numbers and imaginary numbers. Uh, adding and subtracting. I don't want you to get, uh, I don't want you to overthink this at all. What we do when we add complex numbers is we follow the same rules we would use if we were adding binomials. So if we have 4 plus 7i plus 1 minus 6i, so 1. Well, if this was some variable instead of the letter i, what we would do is we would say this is the same as saying 4 plus 7i plus 1 minus 6i, which is the same as saying 4 plus 1 and 7 minus 6, so we would get 5, and we would get plus 1i or just i. And that would be our answer. Similarly, if we were subtracting, same rules apply uh, as they do. Oh, this is just 2, not 2i. Two same rules apply as they would if we were adding or subtracting polynomials or binomials. Uh, if we were adding and subtracting binomials here, then we would have to distribute this negative and this negative. And we have to do just that. We're going to say this is the same as saying 3i plus 2 minus 3i minus 2 minus 5i. And now when we combine our like terms here, it looks like we have a 3i minus a 3i minus a 5i, which would get us negative 5i. And then we have 2 minus 2, which would get us 0, so we're left with just negative 5i, and that's it. Uh, let's talk about multiplying complex numbers, so let me add that topic. Multiplying, what we can do here is we can say, again, same properties as with polynomials. If we were multiplying something outside parentheses, we know that we would have to distribute the 4, and that's exactly what we're going to do. It doesn't matter that i is there. We follow the same rules. So we get negative 8 plus 12i, and that's it. That's our answer. And again, distribution property is what helped us get there. Uh, if we had, say, two binomials, if we had a 2 minus i, two sets of complex numbers, 2 minus i and 4 plus 3i, and we were multiplying them together, 
Well, if we saw two binomials normally in algebra, we know that we would have to FOIL, and that's exactly the same step we're going to perform right now. We're going to FOIL. We're going to say 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 2 times 3i, which would be 6i, minus 4i, minus 3i squared. Because we have two i's, we have a negative, so we get negative 3i squared. When we start to simplify this, uh, we can begin by rewriting. So we can say 8, and then we can say 6i minus 4i would get us 2i. And then I can say minus 3, and I can change this i squared into negative 1. i squared equals negative 1. So every time I see an i squared, I can change it to a negative 1. Now what I've got going on is 8 plus 2i, and then a negative 3 times a negative 1 is going to get me plus 3. And when I simplify this and I say 8 plus 3, I get 11 plus 2i. And that's really all I have to show you in regards to operations. Now let's talk about complex conjugates. Uh, we understand that if we have the identity uh, a squared minus b squared, that's the same as saying a plus b times a minus b, where these two are conjugates. You notice this as the sum and difference uh, pattern. And what we can do is we can use this to apply a rule about complex conjugates, uh, conjugates that come from complex numbers. And what that rule says is uh, when finding the product of two complex numbers that are conjugates, the result is two real numbers. So let's do an example of what this means. Uh, if we were given 1 plus i, and maybe we're asked to multiply by the complex conjugate. Well, we can do that first by writing 1 plus i as a factor, and then we're going to multiply by its complex conjugate. So we're still going to have 1, and we're still going to have i, but this time we're going to multiply by the conjugate, so we're going to say minus. And we're going to treat this just like we did when we multiplied two complex numbers earlier. We're going to FOIL. Uh, or we can even follow the identity here, but for the first thing, what we'll do is we'll just FOIL it out to make sure that it works. Okay, so uh, we'll do 1 times 1, which would be 1. We would have minus i, we'd have plus i, and we'd have minus i squared. So we'd have 1, these two i's would cancel each other out, a negative and a positive, minus an i squared, minus a negative 1. Minus a negative means plus, and so I get 2. Next example, given, let's say, 4 minus 3i this time, and we're asked again to multiply by the complex conjugate. And again, this helps us get those real number answers. Uh, what we're going to start with is our 4 minus our 3i. Our next factor is going to have a 4, and it's going to have a 3i, but then it's going to have a plus. We'll FOIL once more. That's how we treat these multiplication problems. We get 16, we get plus 
12i, we get minus 12i, and we get negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and then we have i squared. I have 16, and positive 12, negative 12 cancel each other out, and so I have minus 9 times i squared times negative 1. 16 and a negative 9 times a negative 1 is a positive 9, so 16 plus 9, and I get 25. Oh, 25. Why did I write 12? Aye, aye, aye. 25. Uh, now let's talk about rewriting negative radicals in terms of i. So, uh, for example, if I have, say, the square root of negative 3, what I actually have inside of this is the letter i right now, and here's how I know that. I can separate the square root of negative 3 as the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. I know I can rewrite this piece, the square root of negative 1, as i, so what I really have is the square root of 3 times i. It's important that you understand this distinction. This does not say square root of 3i. It says square root of 3 times i. i is not underneath the radical anymore. Uh, if I had, let's say, square root of negative 3 times square root of negative 12, again, I can do some rewriting here. I could rewrite the square root of negative 3 as the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1. I could rewrite the square root of negative 12 as the square root of 12 times the square root of negative 1. I have an i here, and I have an i here, so I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to say the square root of 3i times the square root of 12 i, and then I can do some simplifying. I can say 3 times 12 is going to be the square root of 36, and then i times i is going to be i squared. I know the square root of 36 is the same as saying 6, and I know the square, uh, i squared is the same as saying negative 1, and so I get negative 6 as my answer. Uh, let's do one more quick recap of simplifying radicals. So if I have n square root of negative 48 minus square root of negative 27, a good first step here is to break these up into square root of 48i minus square root of 27i. And before I move on, I want to break up these radicals and simplify them. 48 is not a perfect square, however, 16 is. So what I can simplify this out to be is square root of 16 times the square root of 3, because 16 times 3 is 48. Uh, 27 is not a perfect square. However, its factor 9 is, and I can say radical 9 times radical 3 gets me radical 27. So when I split that up, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, or 4 times 3. 4 times square root of 3, i minus, here, the square root of 9 is going to become the number 3. I still have the square root of 3, and then I have that letter i on the outside as well. Now, if we remember from simplifying radicals, when I have the same radical and variable, what I can do is I can combine like terms. So if I have 4 minus 3, I actually have 1 radical 3, i, and that is my answer. Last topic for you guys today is uh, solving a quadratic with complex numbers. So let's talk about if I had the quadratic x squared plus 4 and I wanted to find its zeros. I would set it equal to 0. I would subtract 4 from both sides. I would take the square root of each thing. I know I can break up the square root of negative 4 as the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1, which is the square root of 4 times i, and the square root of 4 is 
2, so I can say x is plus or minus 2i. Uh, if I had something that wasn't factorable, let's say I had 3x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. This is not factorable. So what I would have to do is I'd have to use the quadratic formula. I would have to do negative, negative 2 plus or minus b squared, negative 2 squared, minus 4 times the a times the c, all over 2a, all over 2 times 3. When I first begin to simplify here, I get 2 plus or minus 4 minus 60 all over 6. So I get 2 plus or minus radical negative 56 all over 6. When I simplify uh, radical 50, negative 56, what I end up getting is 2 plus or minus 2 outside the square root of 14 times i all over 6. <coughs> if I were to divide out 2 here, 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 and here, I would get 1 plus or minus radical 14i all over 3, and this would be my pair of zeros. All right, that's all I have to show you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in class tomorrow.